Pat Casey's riding is complex. There is no one that rides the way that Pat Casey does. There was never a deviation of his path. Pat Casey taking over the top spot. A day out filming with Pat is like, if you're lighthearted, you shouldn't even be there because he's going to war. He's determined to be a good dad. He's determined to be a good husband. He's determined to be a good bike rider. Everything that Pat does, he's determined to put 150% into. Patrick was a very easy kid to raise, very energetic. He was, uh, he was crazy. He was a natural. He had a love for the bike. And so we decided to put him into BMX. So he started racing BMX at about five. I really just like getting high in the air and jumping on my bike. That was, that was the most fun for me. My parents have always been super supportive. Oh, no footer! Building little ramps as a kid. At age 10, do his little, a little report he had in the fifth grade. And it says, biking is my hobby, but when I grow up, I want it to be my job. It's so sweet. It's just, and all these little pictures of, it's just been part of him since he was a tiny. And then at 12 years old, my dad built me a half pipe in the backyard. He rode it religiously. From about second grade to about seventh grade, he played tackle football. The biking was still number one to him, and we were doing little competitions and stuff here and there, and he went to Woodward for the first time at 13 years old. They would tap you if they thought you were a good rider, and they'd invite you back for a free week, and he got tapped. The coach said, you pick football or BMX. At that point, I knew I had to choose BMX. Pat's escape was BMX. I think it was easy to go out in the backyard and completely forget about everything else that was going on. That's where he spent his high school years, in the backyard, and that's when he really took off through all these competitions. 2010, you know, Pat's starting to pick up some momentum. He made finals at his first due tour ever. He showed up open qualifying. That being my first pro contest, I was definitely intimidated. I don't know, I just performed. <laughs> Pat was completely undeniable. He wasn't shy. <laughs> He's pushing the big guys around, and they're like, oh, another 16-year-old kid's in here. He definitely got a lot of people's attention and was like, who's this new kid who's on the course? Got to ride with Dave Mirror, his, one of his idols. Oh, he did quite well. He beat Dave, yes. I was shocked. <laughs> if you could say you beat Dave Mirror in something, you've just won life. I think in everybody's eyes, him placing the head of Mira really just cemented the fact that, that Pat was gonna be going places. And right after that, I was like getting hit up by all these companies. I got Monster, Fox, Vans, all at once. It was like, wow, it's really coming true. I'm really gonna be a professional bike rider. Pat had all the right ingredients. He had all the big tricks. He had a great personality. And I think all those things together just made the people that were in control of those brands realize that he was going places, even from the age of 16. He just started going to everything. So 2013, there was an event called Dreamline. That might have been the biggest dirt jump contest to history, how big and gnarly those jumps were. The rider list was insane. It was like 15, the most legendary dirt jumpers. You know, at the time it was like dirt riders only. You gotta be a dirt rider to ride these jumps. He was essentially told he was not able to ride the event because he was not a dirt rider, which I think Pat found very <laughs> insulting. <laughs> I don't know why I did. I said, screw it, I'm gonna go out because I really want to ride the jumps regardless. He showed up, kind of like just barged his way in there. The jumps were so gnarly, it was taking out Season Pro over here, Season Pro over there, and I think that's why Pat got to ride. And Pat proved that he belonged there, one, and that he was that day better than everybody else. It changed a lot of pros' mindsets about Pat that day, that he was able to hang with them and do what he did. It was pretty ironic that he ended up winning the whole thing like nothing. Pat started like just like moving up. Just everything he was doing was going up, up, up. He knew his path and he went his path. He grew up very fast. I guess you could say he knew what he wanted. And he had a woman that he wanted, you know, his wife, Chase. Patrick bought his house. He closed escrow the day he got his high school diploma. When all was said and done, he found his dream yard 
out in Riverside. He had a vision long before we did. I think he bought that house with purpose. I don't think anybody could have envisioned what that backyard ramp would actually turn into. When you look at the backyard, it's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> My family, my son, we're all, we just live on the ramps pretty much, so it's just what we do. BMX bought this. Pat's hard work, dedication, and perseverance. So yes, Pat did it, but it was through BMX. Yeah, so Pat started doing these dream yard edits. It's like the most unbelievably progressive thing that you've ever seen. You know, when Dream Yard 1 came out, I was like, oh my God, this is insane. Like this ramp riding is on another level. And then you watch it compared to the next one that came out, and it's like, this looks like a different guy. Around 2014, I kind of got sick of riding a certain style. He was getting tired of people kind of poaching the things that he did and not letting him have his own space with his creativity and with what he wanted to do, that it just made him take his brakes off, put the free coaster on, and take his own path, which happened to be backwards. I think at the end of the day, I think Pat just wants to not only progress his riding, but progress the sport into a different path. When you work on a video, you get to figure it out, but you sometimes need that video to give you the fire to be like, today's the day I'm sending the thought I had in my head into a move. In the filming process of working on the Dream Yard 3, his last trick, the fakey cash roll. What? I thought he was joking. What? Who's, who's trying that? Nobody, because it takes just sending it. He just got melted, and he just couldn't stop. He wouldn't stop. Yeah, it comes down to you defeating the trick or the trick defeating you, really. Now you've started it, now you have to finish it. He's pure toughness and grit, and then he has all the skills, and those things come together to just like push the boundaries of like what's possible going forwards and backwards. The moment that he got it was like the last trick of the video, and it just felt like a victory for the whole project. That's what the dream yard's about, baby. Patrick is the best father and husband. The kids love their dad. Yeah, I think having kids is the best thing ever. Reed just has a love for bikes, just like Pat does. He is wild and fearless and tough. I think Pat's teaching them that falling down is okay and that you have to get back up and the first time you don't get back up is when you're quitting. If the kids could take one lesson from Pat about life, I think it would be to live every day like it's your last and I think Reed has grasped that idea. I asked Reed today what he was going to do when he grows up and he said, I'm going to ride my bike. Reed competing with Patrick. I don't know, I saw Patrick at 16 was killing a lot of those older guys, so. I think he's teaching them to go after your dreams because he can honestly tell them from the fifth grade, you can do whatever you want to do, I did it. I think he would support anything that his children wanted to do as long as it made them happy. The only thing I need my kids to know is enjoy your life. You only have one, enjoy it. <laughs>